study. Duchess, madam, here is thy royal throne. Seat thyself in royal splendor while I shall get thee thy royal <laughs> cup of coffee. <laughs> Tis creamed and sugared exactly to my taste. Thou shalt be my royal brewmaster for evening coffee from this day forward. From this day forward. To have and to hold. Oh, Pete. We're going to be so happy together. <laughs> I feel so comfortable with you. I feel like... I feel like I can take my shoes off. I'll always love you, Dottie. Always. Wouldn't it be wonderful if time would stand still? If we could always keep what we have tonight. From the beginning, we were learning to live together. And to love together learning to adjust different sexual responses. But time doesn't stand still, and marriage is far more than loving together and enjoying companionship. It's making decisions together, and we had to learn to plan as partners. That first Monday morning, I was so proud of my man going out to earn a living for us. And Pete was so proud of me cooking our first married meal. Then, suddenly, it was time for Pete to go to work. He said he didn't want to go, but he was a responsible married man now. Well, when you marry, you have to adjust to many changes. And I, well, we had decided I should quit my job when we married. Maybe I should say quit my paycheck. I still had a job. As the weeks went by, sometimes I regretted that decision to quit my job. For one thing, I missed those paychecks. And staying home was hard. It was an adjustment I had to work out. There were satisfactions in being a married pair. One thing was our partnership in handling the money. Conflicts over money can be a real problem in marriage. But we decided together how Pete's salary would be spent. Maybe we didn't always agree, but we decided together. So our joint decisions on this and other problems of home management helped in my adjustments from a working girl to a non-employed wife. Aided by little bits of fun and thoughtfulness, the partnership flourished. Another thing, Pete's contributions to my sense of accomplishment. I had a lot to learn about cooking and keeping house, and sometimes those things can seem unimportant and dull. Believe me, a wife does appreciate her husband's appreciation. And, of course, that works both ways. I tried to learn about Pete's job. Sometimes I shared his enthusiasms. And there were times when I had to help absorb his frustrations. It was all part of the partnership. Of course, our marriage had its ups and downs. They all do. But I guess we had worked out pretty good adjustments on affections and our sex life and decisions in our money matters. Adjusting to each other, adjusting to our marriage, sort of showed us how to face these problems. But on another potential source of trouble, in-laws. When we first planned to move into that two-family house, I thought of all those mother-in-law jokes. Still, they couldn't apply to nice people like us. But there were things like I was planning my first bridge luncheon. Honey, Jane can't come on Thursday. I wonder who I should get for a fourth. Mm. Mother plays a good game of bridge. Mm, yes, but... 
Maybe she wouldn't enjoy playing with a bunch of giddy girls. Oh, honey, she'd love it. She likes young people. Of course, I asked her. She insisted on bringing a fancy cake. It was delicious, everyone said. Helped make a good party. But it wasn't my party. Afterwards, Pete said he was glad I had asked her. Said she could have seen from upstairs that something was going on. Might have felt left out. How did I feel? As if we were living in a huge goldfish bowl. But I couldn't explain it to Pete. Oh, it wasn't all bad. Pete's mother and I had good times together. Shopping, for instance. I could learn a lot from her. Her experience in getting bargains. Her little tips on Pete's special likes and dislikes. But, well, one afternoon, Pete stopped in upstairs to deliver a package his mother had asked him to pick up. And it turned into a habit to drop into his mother's on his way from work two or three times a week. I didn't mind so much supper being late. I kept telling myself. But somehow, it seemed on those nights, we always got into an argument, sooner or later. I tried to tell Pete how I felt, but it was no use. He'd just get sore and make some crack about my family. I thought my family was pretty wonderful. My dad and I were real pals. We talked things over. About Pete's mother, I mean. Dad could understand. So could Mom. We had some good chats together on Saturday afternoons when Pete would play golf. It was a joy to see the way Mom and Dad understood each other, anticipated each other's needs, sometimes without a word being spoken. They had really grown together in their marriage. Why couldn't we? Well, in more ways than one, it was a long fall and a cold, hard winter. Meanwhile, we were still working out other adjustments together. Little things. My serving liver and learning to enjoy it because Pete liked it so much. Big things. Pete's realizing that a wife still likes to go out once in a while. And remembering the anniversary of our engagement with tickets to a special show he knew I'd been wanting to see. Married life isn't all Hollywood moonbeams and honeysuckle but it can be mighty satisfying at times. Came spring, and my first spring house cleaning. And, well, it was Pete's mother. It wasn't that she criticized me, or even told me how to do things. But somehow, whatever I did, she did too, but in a different way. And it seemed to me she always thought her way was better. There were so many little situations that probably wouldn't have mattered if we hadn't lived in the same house. But I felt so awkward and inferior and mad. That evening, after supper, I thought the time seemed ripe to talk to Pete about us. But suddenly... Daddy, I... Uh... I got a surprise in uh, today's mail. An offer of another job. Wonderful job. But uh, way over in Central City. Let's talk it over. It's time we get away. Do something really decisive about the influence of your parents on our marriage. My parents? Huh. Listen to me all the way, honey, before you get mad. Time we, well, we've got to talk this thing out. You don't know what it's like working in the, the same plant as your 
your wife's father. Dad likes you, Pete. He's done so much for you. Oh, sure he has, dear. I know your dad's been swell. Try to understand me. It means so much to have you understand. Golly, if you feel that way, Pete, you just do. There must be reasons. Well, they, they may not seem very important to you. Tell me, Pete. Things like, well, when I got that promotion in December, you said how grand it was of your dad to help. I mean, praising me to the boss and all. Oh, I felt as though I, I earned that raise myself. And stories of influence like that didn't help me with the other fellas. And then you appreciated your dad's efforts. I wanted, I wanted you to appreciate mine. Darling, how could I have been so stupid? And I heard when you carried our family troubles to your folks and spoke of their house as home and compared us with your folks. I understand. Come to think of it, Peter, I suppose part of me never really did get married. How could I really build our marriage with part of me wanting them to approve everything I did? I tried to be fair about it. I could see that I'd been on the defensive. I hadn't understood that a widow might sort of need a man around the house. And Pete said that he needed, that both of us needed to grow up more. Needed to grow away from our parents a bit more. We've grown up a lot just tonight, haven't we, hon? There'll be other problems ahead, bigger problems, but it'll be the two of us, working together. Hi, honey. Hi, where have you been? Talking to the conductor, trying to get Pullman accommodations. And I got them. Ooh, gee, Pete, you're thoughtful. Hey, Duchess, what am I doing on this seat? <laughs>